listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws Podcast, with your hosts, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Brigarelia? Man, up in the penthouse today. We're in the penthouse. Wells Fargo penthouse. Looking at Baller. He looks like a baller with oh, the yeah. city behind him. I uh, got Citibank. We got the link over here. Mm-hmm. Not bad. A little upgrade from the stew or yeah, just well, a little different? I mean, just a little different energy. It's different. A little different vibe. Different energy for sure. We got to thank Emily Malstrom for helping us out, uh, getting our guest today, Mr. Hilferty, as long as... Uh, as well as Joe Seville, sorry. Um, this is pretty cool. It's really neat, yeah. Yeah, happy that uh, we've been able to pull this together. Yep, awesome. Should Sit be a lot of Dan. fun. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, he's a good man. I can't yeah. wait to get him beside us. Oh, talk yeah. a little bit. I might put him in that chair. It's going to be something different. But Yeah, I'm going to switch around. Okay. Don't confuse confused. me. Don't confuse <laughs> me what we <laughs> got going here. Uh, Regs, training camp. Training camp. Starts today, on. baby. We're here. You used to love that feeling, huh? Oh, man. It wasn't quite a feeling like it. I mean, the the the, the build up, the, all the work in the summer, yeah. you know, kind of having that date circled on the calendar, you know, when the fitness test and all that stuff's coming up, and you know, here we are. Here we are. I'll tell you what, it was. I don't want to say I was ex- I was excited for everybody to be back, and and you know, you get you're getting into the season, but it was it was a lot of work when you have usually seventy to eighty players coming in, but uh, always had the help we needed, and uh, it, it's it, it is an exciting time. So, Baller, you were at the rookie camp and were able to cover the games for Nasty Knuckles. Well, one game anyway, the first game. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Because Riley and I weren't able to be there. Yeah, well, I would uh, start off with what everyone wants to hear. Matt Vay Mitchkov yeah. dominated like you would hope. Of course, game one, you know he's going to score. <laughs> yeah, he should, yeah, right. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, in men's league, yeah, you know he's, he's going to score. It. I think my favorite part was every scrum that was on the ice, he was right smack in the middle yeah, of it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It was great to see. Um, Jet Lichenko, he was the first-round pick of the season. They have some instant chemistry, so hopefully that oh, builds off cool. into the future. That's cool. Um, I go over to Samu Tuomala. Had a really strong start to the camp, but missed the last two days. A little banged up. Don't think it's anything too serious. Um, how about Sawyer Bolton yes. with the Phantoms? Yeah, Eric bring him up, yes. Um, just an absolute menace out there, just killing guys <laughs> yeah, on the ice. Wrecking it was ball. It. Wrecking ball is a good way to describe it. He yeah. was awesome to see. Yeah, that's that, great. That's Appreciate awesome because uh, I gotta I gotta pull up. By, I had talked to Lappy about about Sawyer, and obviously you have some history with his dad. We've talked about that before. You guys had a couple scraps, and his dad was really tough. And last year, Sawyer was in the North American League to start the year playing against uh, the Reb- Philadelphia Rebels, and it was so funny because I'm like, I see him, and then I'm like, is that well, it's got to be Bolts' kid, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, watch, right. looking at him, it's the way he's built. And uh, it was funny because the whole first period, guys were coming over going, uh, Bolton asked me to go, and, and I mean, he's yeah. asking everyone, Everybody, not just yeah. the big guys, but he would, he just wanted a Tilly, you know, and oh, yeah. get his team going. But um, uh, I asked Lappy about him, and he said, this was his quote, great first impression in those games. So uh, Baller was there to see it, yeah. which is cool. And I, I'm excited for the kid because if he's anything like his dad, he's going to be a great teammate. Yeah. He's going to work his butt off, and he's going to be there to protect his uh, teammates as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and you know, it reminds me of myself, right? Yes, I mean, it's yes. just like a similar type of uh, role, right? I mean, it's actually hard to believe that this guy's still doing that. I know, in this day and I age, know. But, I mean, obviously the apple won't fall far from the tree. He's a Bolton. Yes. I wouldn't expect anything less. So, um, But obviously got a great attitude, the work ethic, as you mentioned. And yep. The Flyers organization of all of them that appreciate that. You just hope that a guy like that, you know, just keeps developing and gets in the lineup, stays in the lineup, and you know anything, anything's possible. But he's obviously got like that. You know, I say the X factor as far as like the charisma goes and right. willing to do anything for his teammate and. It's all you need is an opportunity, so we'll see how it plays out for That's them. right. And, you know, I'm sure that all the guys that we know with development now with the Flyers are all great. Schultz, yep. Riley Armstrong, um, Patrick Sharp now, and, mm-hmm. and the other guys. Um, 
they're going to make sure he works on the other side of his game. Exactly. Like you joke around about, I wish I would have worked more on it when I was playing, but um, you put the work in to make it to the NHL. And uh, hopefully, you know, they're pushing him that way as well. Like they're definitely not going to take the role he plays out of his game. Right. But I'm sure he's going to be working hard. And Lappy will make sure he does oh, that yeah. as well um, in the American League if that's where he is. Mm-hmm. You, know, um, you got to work on some skills too. You you should. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Probably should. Yeah, you should have been the most skilled of all those two pass <laughs> games with Joey Mullen. This guy, did he ever lose? Never lost. <laughs> he scored big time goals. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the difference I know. was is those games I was so relaxed and calm because you know I didn't have five pots of coffee in me, <laughs> thirteen Sudafed. You, you know what I mean? So I was relaxed, <laughs> yeah. composed, making yeah. plays, and then. You know, if I ever got in the lineup, you know, the pregame. I knew what the, was going on. The, the, the pregame <laughs> abuse started about 3.30 p.m. It started early. <laughs> Riley, why are you here already? I've already had a few cups of coffee. Oh, yeah. He's going <laughs> to fry the nervous system before a kickball, yeah. before the yeah, game. before and, the uh, game, exactly. And have zero composure when I get the puck and just throw it into the corner and run somebody over. <laughs> run it, someone it's over. It's pretty simple. Baller, you got about Going back to the camp itself. <laughs> yes. Day one, Matt Vay Mitchkov, two-on-twos, behind the net. Ports up in the crowd, yeah. up, in, up top. He attempted the Michigan. He didn't pull it off. Yeah. What do you think Torch was thinking about that? Did he, was he standing up, standing O? Did he? <laughs> did he, he was like smiling for the fans, but he's like, take take notes, tell this kid never do that again. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, um, I think you can almost expect him to be as creative as he wants to be. I mean, yeah. I get within limitations. I think that's always going to be the conversation is like, we know your high skill. We know you could attempt pretty much any you know type of skilled play but right. it, is it you know the right play is it the right moment? time yeah but it seemed like it was to be honest yep. i mean it was you yeah. know oh, like, yeah that one and specifically he, yeah. And, and like you said and, and torts may get a lot of criticism about how hard he is on guys but he does like creativity oh, sure. he, he really does I, I i believe he does sometimes you wonder when he gets upset with some guys but uh it, i saw that baller that, that was really cool but there there was a play actually in the first rookie game up in lehigh uh, he's all alone behind the net, and both defensemen come to attack him. And he actually attempted the Zegras Michigan flip oh. to pass over the net. Oh, nice! But defenseman got a glove on it. So. Yeah. yeah, and those types of plays. I remember when Torts was on the, you know, the uh, I forget what panel it was on the NHL Network or yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. And, he, and when when Zegras and these guys started doing these plays from behind the net, and you know his position on there was like, you know, you. We, we can never let, let that happen, but the reality is, is there, you, you know, he, t- he talked about defending it, like, you know, squash the bug kind of thing. Right. The reality is these guys are so good with the puck so quickly, they're, they're almost baiting you in yes. to do it. So yes. it's like, the, uh, I, would, uh, I would imagine that the conversation within the coaching staff around these types of skilled players has changed over the years. Where like, like, there's obviously a level of respect you have to have. You can't just go guns a blaze and try to shut him down where he's coming out the other side yeah. with the puck top in the corner because he you know, reverse michigan did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, No, you're right. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would like to think that Torts has adapted or you know, evolved his positioning on some of these really super high-level skilled plays as long as there's like a legitimate chance of them working out. You right, know, right. It's not just you know, uh, expecting guys to just pull – randomly pull skilled plays out of their ass that have no business doing them in those particular times and spaces. But Yeah, you're, um, you're right. Last thing I'll add for rookie camp, the goalie, Alexei Kolosov, did not show up. Your guys' thoughts? A little disappointing. Um, I was under the impression uh, when we spoke with Danny Breer, uh, the Flyers GM, that he really couldn't do anything but come here to play. But uh, as Baller did mention before we started, I guess Fedotov did the same and was able to play in the KHL. So uh, I guess he had said, Baller, that he did not want to play in the American League. Yeah, that's what it sounds like if he's not – I guess he didn't really want to battle or fight for a job. It's just he wanted to be guaranteed an NHL spot. They didn't guarantee him an NHL spot, so I guess he figured he'd stay in Russia. Well, it's you know you always hear that thing. The coach will come in there, or the GM. You're not guaranteed a spot. Well, there are some guys that are guaranteed a spot. We all know that, but – Gosh, come in and beat beat them out. Yeah. Like, if you come in here and stand on your head and you're the best goalie in camp, just like Bobrovsky did way back. I mean, yeah. if you remember that, we did not expect Bob to be the opening night starter. Yeah. No, in, it, in 2011. It, or 2010-11, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it's a challenging situation for these young guys because they they want an easier path forward. You're leaving your, your home country. Right. Right? And, and nothing against Lehigh, but, you know, 
Allentown might not be the sexiest place to live, and he's probably like, if I'm going to come overseas, obviously you'd want to be in the show in of Philly. Of course, who doesn't? Right? I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> but, I mean, I think it's one of these, like, you know, you know life decisions that you have to make because it's like it's a, it's a commitment one way or another, right? right. Either True. he's going to be committed to staying in Russia, which again I don't know the contracts situations yeah, and how, how that all works over there. You know, when you talk yeah. about voiding a contract here, or I'm not sure it's vo- it's not voided, but you know if he's still going to continue to play over there. But I can see, I could kind of see both sides of it, right? I mean, right. obviously there's something to be said about coming over here with a chip on your shoulder, earn a spot, you know, do it the old fashioned way because you believe in yourself and the whole thing. Um, but if, if there's, you know, a chance or a good chance that you're going to be the third one down the totem pole and you're going to be in the minors, like, you know, I could see his, his safer play, more comfortable play staying home. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I mean, so it's his own personal life. I mean, yeah, he can do what he wants, I guess. He can do what he wants, but it's a shame because everything we hear, right. all the positive yes. things you hear about the, the talent this kid has yeah, it's a shame. as a goaltender and, I would have liked to see him come to camp and, and yeah, battle me for too. that spot 100%, me um, too. and see what happens, you know. But Healthy um, competition. Yeah, right? it's, I, mean, it's, I think it's great. I, I, I personally wanted to see him in action because yeah. like, I have not. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up, Baller uh, Kolosov. But uh, I was going to say our good friend, friend of the show, good buddy James Van Ramsey, JVR, uh, yeah. just signed a year deal in Columbus with the Blue Jackets, our buddy Provy there. Yep. Um, Going in there, I'm assuming, you know, they're hoping for some points. Probably a power play guy. And, uh, you know, James keeps himself in tremendous yeah. shape. Uh, we've we've seen that for years. Leadership, leadership And the role, leadership thing is, like, he is a team guy. Yeah. Great guy. You know, great human. His whole family. Um, so, congrats, JVR, man. Yep. Happy for you. Uh, we were texting the other day. And he said, I should have some news tomorrow. And yeah. sure enough, it came out. So happy happy for JVR, man. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a big boost for Columbus. Yeah. I agree, really is. Agreed, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to find a, a more of a pro. I mean, it's still floating around. You know, like you said, take care, takes care of himself. He's so good with the young guys. Yeah, exactly. Just to, just to have them witness his yeah. routines and just like how much he pours into the recovery side of things and just yep. being on, on top of his game. So I think he'll do great there. I do too. I'm, I'm excited for him. Deal. I'm I'm happy because I was, you know, I I thought of him the other day because I'm like, man, it's getting late here, and I, and we had texted about a month ago, just checking in, and and um, I was like, gosh, man, I'm gonna message him real quick and see how he's doing. But uh, the other thing is, what what's a good number for Sid? <laughs> if you're talking about a salary, man, unbelievable. Like what a guy. You know, people say, well, he's made a lot of money. Yeah, he has, but he does, he earns every dollar that man's made in this league and 100%. more. And more. And more. Let's yeah, be honest. Exactly. Like, he's at the age, he's at what's he, 36 baller now? Is he 36, 37? 37. I'm um, sorry, he's 37, and the guy still gets it done. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's a machine. I know people in Philadelphia, you know, you love to hate Sid, but man, like, what a move. Like, what, what are your thoughts on how you played? Like, as a teammate, you see a guy, obviously it's a lot of money, but he's worth more. Well, that's it, right? He could have easily gotten more, 10 plus, you know, a yeah. uh, million dollars. As long as I can remember, he's just been a class guy. He's always, I mean, you say what you want about him his first couple of years, maybe whining a little too much. The, the reality is this guy's an He was also a kid. Pr- yeah, he was he's also, also a, a kid, kid, you know? Um so good for the game. You know, yes. You're not going to find a more humble superstar. Uh, obviously wants to stay in, in pit and just keep yep. that thing growing. I mean, it's class move. I mean, it, it is no a, other way to cut that one up. It is a classy move, but I think we talked about this before too quickly. I just want to say, like, I'm not sure which way they're headed. So, like, I almost, I, you know, it'd be weird to see him in another jersey. We said that about a lot of players and it ends up happening, but, like, you almost maybe maybe after next year if they're still not in the hunt he gets right. moved you never know you right never know, yeah. um but 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 what a classy guy and i've said it before guys get mad at me but i don't care because the, this guy is a class act and what an ambassador for the, for the national hockey but just he, he's like you said he's he's just he's unbelievable yeah yeah, and so I w- wasn't surprised when I saw saw that news, yeah. right? It was Coach like, Chippy made it pretty yeah, good yeah, made, made it pretty Coach funny. Chippy was <laughs> Coach Chippy was spot on. But yeah, i mean when it, when it came out, I was like, of course, he, he would do something like this, right? Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, um, yeah. so, you know, stay in pit. Yep. You know, he's obviously a loyal guy. They're loyal to him, and 
Oh, how can well, you not, how can be? You not yeah, be? You guys yeah. should be, be the president of the team, probably. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that's in where a few years. Like, that's where he's headed. They're probably yeah. just taking that extra three mil, putting it aside. Yeah, he's gonna get paid for the rest of his life. As, yeah, hundred you know, percent. Some sort of penguin executive there. So the the thing I'll add is, you would think that the Penguins front office knew he was going to give a bit of a hometown discount huh. with the cap going up. How do you not keep Gensel? That's uh, a, I don't get. That's that. a great point. That's a great point. That's a great question, yeah. I don't know it, why. Yeah, that that's actually Bullard. That, great point, man. That's why you're here, dude. <laughs> He's the brains. Capologist. Um, yeah, he does it all, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we're in the penthouse today. <laughs> um, no, but that, that's a great point. And, and uh, I, w- I was actually thinking, as you said that, before you brought up Gensel, was like, who are they bringing in with that extra money they well, have? But it, right? that was – your point was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so you anyway, yeah, yeah, you had him. Uh, it's not a bad guy to play with. I'm sure Gensel, you know, I'm sure you'll be happy. But uh, it's probably a lot of fun playing with Sidney Crosby. Oh, you think obviously. so? Nass, I'd like to add my condolences to the the Pete family. Stephen oh, Pete, uh, yes, you know, God rest his soul. Uh, you know, passed this past week. Yep. Fortunate accident. Uh, tough as nails. One of the toughest to he play. Was. He was the champ when I. Moved away from home in the Western Hockey League, you know, 18 years old and just taking on every tough guy in the league and uh, had a great NHL career. Uh, yeah. It's just a, it's a shame, you know. It's terrible. Um, so wishing yeah, friends and family of the Pete family the best and um, in these tough times. So Yeah, our prayers are with him. All right, Nass, before we get into our interview with Dan Hilferty, yes. this segment is brought to you by Bet365, proud partner of Nasty Knuckles. Open an account today with Bet365 and bet on a huge range of markets. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Use code hockey, C-A. Boom. What do you got, Nass? You got that I'm, app open? I'm going to tell you what I got. I've got oh. my Bet365 app open. And after this letdown this past week, I'm not trying to be a downer, but... After watching the Saints play in Dallas and run amok on the Cowboys, uh, light them up, I'm going to take the Saints at minus 2.5 um, at a minus 120 because they look pretty good. I know it's week to week, but I'm going with the Saints. Sorry, I'm going against our birds, but I got to do it. Minus 2.5. Oh, hard to believe you're already jumping chef i'm not i'm just bailing telling you birds. i watch that team i'm not trying to bail on them because i because <laughs> i put down something on bet 365 for them to be the nfc champions so all right um all right. i don't i don't want them to lose but i i don't want to lose any money either well now that's, i'm going head to head with you oh i think they're bouncing back after last week oh boy so i'm taking the eagles at a plus two and a half for a plus one hundo all right all right well we'll see what happens on sunday but uh I hope, I hope you're right, but I actually don't because I don't want to lose my money. But I can't we'll wait see. To, to see you We're next week. We're going head to head. We head might to have head. to put a side bet. You have to do something or I have to do something. Right. We'll talk about that we'll later. Talk about that. All right, bet 365. All right, Nass. 172. Can't believe it. Dan Hilferty. Did you think on 172 we'd be in the penthouse? Didn't think that. I didn't either. No, I didn't see it coming. All right, baller. All right, here we go. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Suttlemeyer. And this week, we are honored. We're up in the penthouse rigs. We are. With the chairman <laughs> and CEO of Comcast Spectacor and governor of the Philadelphia Flyers. Please welcome Mr. Daniel Hilferty. How are you, sir? Thank you for joining us. We understand that you blew off a, a meeting with the National Hockey League to come in here with the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we appreciate your time. How's it going? I almost blew off a meeting with the mayor. <laughs> yeah, right. well, true story. Uh, well, thank, that is a true story. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. I, I actually have been excited about this. And um, whether it's talking to Jonesy or Danny and, and other folks around the, the hockey side of the, the business, uh, they have such great respect for what you do and uh, that, that you, you tell it as it is. And, and that's, that's all we're asking for. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we appreciate, appreciate you. You're carving out the time. I know you're a busy man. Very Middle of training camp. Yeah. Instead of talking with the mayor. Uh, so we appreciate uh, this opportunity. So Great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we were uh, – Joe Seville, by the way, needs to get a lot of credit because we hear he found out that it would save 
quite a bit of money to have that. No, I'm kidding. We <laughs> totally would say that. He gave us a couple bucks for that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Joe's awesome. But yeah, Joe um, yeah. uh, it's it's a great time of year. The boys are back in town. A little thin Lizzy uh, coming at you there. But uh, you, got, you must be super excited about I, this season. I, I really am excited. I, I have to say for me, um, and, and I've never hidden the fact, I, I've been a fan since well before you played. And, and I, uh, I love the Flyers. But I saw it as a fan. So I, I really looked at my first year as an opportunity. And, and Jonesy and Danny and Torts at a certain level, I mean, he's obviously a busy individual, have really educated me. I, I feel like I'm beyond a fan now. Mm. Now, I'll never be an expert. I'll never pretend to be an expert. But uh, if, I, if, I, uh, if I really had uh, liked hockey, almost loved hockey before, I have like an incredible passion. And, and so this summer, you know, going over to, to Voorhees on a regular basis and seeing all the incredible renovations. The new, the new one new rink, we're going to do the other rink next year. New locker room, new kitchen uh, and dining area where there's one table where all the players sit yeah, together. Yeah, so not, cool. Not divided up. Yeah, and, cool. and, the, and just seeing the facility. But what was really amazing to me is the number of players, both prospects and established players, who were here for better parts of the summer and enthusiastically in that gym, improving their craft. Mm -hmm. For me, that was really cool. Even before rookie camp and now uh, the the veterans camp starting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's important. And it obviously shows um, that they want to be around here and that they, they appreciate the culture that you guys have created for them. Right. They, They wouldn't stay here if they didn't feel comfortable and feel safe here. Um, and obviously want yeah, to I, work on their craft. So yeah, obviously it props to what you guys are doing because I, I think there was a phase of time there where guys weren't around. Because back right. when I played, it was a thing. Guys stuck around and you know trained and did the whole thing. But then there was a time where there wasn't many guys around. So yeah. obviously props you know, and, and well, kudos well, thank, to you guys. Thanks for, for that. I, I, here, here's the way I look at it. We, and it, it does get to my business background, um, firmly believe that if, if you're going to go about something and try to do something as as bold as winning a stanley cup or at least competing for stanley cups you have to create first an environment Mm -hmm. that that speaks to excellent first class best in class you have to create um, an open and respectful culture where people do feel comfortable where people do feel excited about being part of something that's great and that's something that the flyers stood for i mean you lived yes. it yeah. right yes mm-hmm. and and we want to bring that back but bring it back in a new way that is consistent with this day and age where we're having podcast type of conversations social media and really engaging fans how they need to be engaged well who better to do that than a happy group of players yeah, right. who know they've got best the best of everything yeah no yes, doubt. that's definitely can you uh, expand on that a little bit obviously you have experience building culture within business and then you're a fan of the flyers you know observing ed snyder and, and the culture yeah. that he created like talk about maybe the blending of the, of the world's similarities differences i mean it's obviously a big part of what you do yeah so so first and foremost uh, it, it, it's interesting that um uh, when when I first had a conversation with Brian Roberts, the, the, who might be a bigger fan of hockey than I am, the guy, uh, 10.30 at night, uh, there'll be a game on the West Coast. I'll be trying to go to sleep. <laughs> He's not, he'll start yeah. texting. You know? <laughs> but but, yeah. but, but oh, No, nah, I'm getting that way yeah. now. <laughs> but, but the truth of the matter is uh, it all starts with Ed Snyder, and, mm-hmm. and everybody respectfully refers to him as, as Mr. Snyder. And so uh, I always want to make it very clear I'm not Ed Snyder. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm myself. But what I try to do is learn what he did in his own way to create this behemoth of a, of a competitive family. Mm-hmm. And, and so that gets to the conversation with Brian. Brian was like, well, you'll be the governor, in essence, the owner of the, the Flyers. I'm not the owner of the Flyers. I'm the governor. I represent ownership. And I respect the fact that I, I get to represent this great company, great leader in Brian Roberts, great company in Comcast, that uh, through Comcast Spectacor. So I want to be clear about those two things. Mm-hmm. But, but carrying those things, that the culture that Brian has built, the culture that Ed Snyder built, I've put my own flavor in there as well. And, and here's the way I look at it. I say this pretty consistently. Um, I have a set of skills. We all have a set of skills. As a player, you knew what your strengths were, and you knew you know, who did something a little better, and you made sure you put that other player in a position to exemplify their skill set. Right. I feel that way about a team. 
like there's things I do really well, but there's things I might have a blind spot about or I'm not as strong at. And the idea of building that culture, that environment of excellence and trust and openness is where someone feels respected for the gifts that they've been given yeah, or the gifts 100%. that they've, been, they've developed. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're trying to do on the business side. And, and then in talking to Danny and Jonesy, I could talk about those two guys all day, mm-hmm. but, but they're doing the same thing in their own way on the hockey side. And, and what I've tried to say is we, we, we're building a toll-free bridge you know, yeah, 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 toll-free yeah. bridge between business and hockey, where we all respect each other's gifts, allow some to sh- some to shine when it's their turn to shine, and we're hoping. And I feel it the way Torts. I love to listen to him talk to his players. Listen to him this morning, kick off uh, the, the the training camp, and I'm. You guys remember what that that Get was you fired like? Up. That, oh yeah, you know, your yeah, stomach. Right. You're fired up, and and it's all about. Hey, we all have to rely on each other. We all have to respect each other's skill set. We all have to push each other to get better individually and collectively. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you touched on something there. I wrote this down because uh, I, I saw you in an interview before, or maybe I read it, but you, you, talking about Mr. Schneider and how you have your own flavor. But you, you said we're not competing with Mr. Schneider, obviously, but we're paying homage to that, and we're doing our own, you know, in, yeah. in your way. And I think that's awesome. And it's you could just see from last year uh, in your first year here, um, and there's a lot of pieces that come together, a lot, as you know. But in the building, it, it was just such a different vibe. Mm-hmm. The the players, uh, I'm still close with a lot of the guys, yeah. so I hang out with them, and and, and and they they can't say enough good things. And I did want to bring up, uh, I was over, at, I took my son over to a development camp, and I thought it was so cool that you came downstairs. That's something you don't have to do, but I know that's the that's part of what you are and who you are. But it was so cool, and I heard people as you shook their hand walk away. Oh my God, that was awesome! It it means more than you know yeah. to, I, to to people. I that, that I, I appreciate that. that. I, yeah. I have to say, like um, being CEO of a large healthcare company, nobody ever stopped me. Especially especially a health insurance company. Yeah, yeah, right? They might have thrown something at me. Yeah. So, but but I but I but like. And my wife sees it too. I get stopped on Market Street. I get stopped in anywhere in the suburbs. I get stopped at the shore. Um, guys yell at the window, hey, thank you, yeah. thank you. And, and for me, like I take that seriously. I, I, I'm proud to be part of this family that you guys have been part of, yeah. large part of your adult lives, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so, um, A, I don't take it lightly. B, I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I enjoy, I, I was proud. They, I just got a text from somebody I know who was at the first day of rookie camp. They're all excited about Mishkov and Jet and all those guys. Yeah, Bob, sure. McDonald, you can go on down the list. But, but I talked to every single person. And I, I, like, I had time, so I just sat and talked. Or, and if they wanted to watch hockey, I just moved on. But I yeah. said hello. And I could, I could tell uh, I've never been a player, uh, certainly wasn't a star uh, athlete, was a good high school and college, good high school, okay college <laughs> basketball player. But, but I could tell people, because I represent that history of Ed Snyder, that legacy, right. I represent but the players and the coaches and the trainers and the locker room guys and the people in the front office and the business people do every day to create a great environment. And so for me at this stage of my life and my career, and, and for my wife, Joan, like we, not only do we take it serious, but we're proud to represent the legacy that you guys built. Yeah. The legacy of Ed Snyder, the legacy of Bobby Clark, the legacy of Paul Holmgren. Uh, I'm gonna, I, if I can just finish on this, and I'm sure, sorry. Yeah. I'm getting, no, I'm, no. I'm getting carried away here. No, it's love it. It's if, if you were at our opening press conference where I announced Jonesy as president and we affirmed that Danny was gonna be the permanent GM and Torch was there and it was, it was festive. Um, and there was a lot of lingering questions about, oh, you got to get rid of the old. Why mm. are we rehashing the, the Broad Street bullies and, you know, Clarkie and Homer and Bobby, Billy Barber? Well, you know what? There, there's there's thing I've said it many times that in, on the National Archives building in, in Washington, D.C., there's a saying that the past is prologue. And what for me that means is if you don't cherish your past, if you don't know your roots, if you don't know the foundation of your your very organization, how can you build an exciting, better tomorrow? 
Right. Well, who better to pay homage to than the foundational titans of our organization? Ed Snyder, Bob Clark, Paul Homer. The, these, these folks gave their lives and built something special. Jonesy, Danny, and Torts, sure, are doing it different because maybe the times have changed, right. but I, I, I'm so proud of them that they still have conversations with those guys and get real important insights to make us the best possible franchise we can 100%. be. 100%. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm just going to say, like, everything you said is being felt, yes. right? And, and I think uh, the word that comes to mind is, is authenticity. Like, you know, you're being authentic to you, taking, you know, your own personal, unique you know, experience and applying it to this. Jonesy's doing the same. Uh, Danny's doing the same, right? They're all learning from Flyers culture yeah. and doing it uh, the best way they know how, but their, you know, their skill set and their, their versions of communication. And I just felt, you know, from the way he was speaking with you, Jonesy, no one's changed, right? Jonesy's still Jonesy. Danny's still Danny. You know, uh, Torts still Torts. No one's, you know, walking around trying to be someone they're not. And I yeah. think it's felt and, you know, uh, you know, props to you guys for being yeah. able to come together. So, so Rock, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. How, how would you, how would you have, um, I think you would have loved the torts. Like yeah, just, oh yeah. And, oh, yeah. and, 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 and I, I see, you know, the players sometimes are like, cause he's hard. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he, he demands excellence, but man, I, I've never seen uh, a more caring, honest, direct person in the coaching profession. Um, and, and so what I see in the players is, they like being pushed. They like being expected to, to continue to develop, to find them best, their best selves. And the beauty of torts, in my mind, is not just their best selves as a player, as a teammate, but as a person. The person. Yes. What more can you ask for? Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's true. I, yeah. I've, I've been fortunate enough. Uh, I was very fortunate to be around the Flyers organization my whole life. My dad worked yeah. here for 20 years. Uh, so I grew up you know, and with the Flyers, and then I was fortunate to be here for 25 years of my own life uh, working. Uh, but you're right, I've uh, had the opportunity to work what with Torch. Are you Torch. 70? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting away. Why are you going to call me he's, out? He's, he's, he's got I'm very sensitive about the <laughs> I'm the oldest guy. No, no. Uh, no I, I'm getting up there, but uh, oh, sorry, you look great. Right. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's a joke we always have. He's always like, yeah, you look 42 this year. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, plus 11. But uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I was going to say I was fortunate enough to, I've worked with Torch quite a few times with USA Hockey and um, that's one thing I always tell people like they're like oh he's crazy so I'm like listen he's one of the best could be possibly the best US born coach you know uh, arguably there is but the caring part like you're talking about yes he's a hard coach he, he just wants the best side. and if you're an athlete Riley, you know Riley can speak about this uh, playing in the National Hockey League you want to be pushed and like you said and I you said you think they enjoy it I believe it but uh torts the, the the other side of him when you're not talking hockey you you can't ask for a better human being yeah. like he truly cares about you uh every time I see him he still asks about my son who he met you know, when Elvis was uh, back in 2016, he might have been two, you know, but he always asked how his <laughs> Oh, family. Elvis is your, your – Yeah, Elvis well, is my I love son. it. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, it, it's funny. Actually, I don't want to get off topic here, but I, before I forget, last night uh, I had some information on you, and I'm, I'm looking at it, my, and Elvis is reading your uh, – <laughs> he's like, on my phone, he's reading about you, and he says, Dad, Mr. Elfrey, got, got the World Cup here? Wait a minute. T yeah. Tell me we need tickets. Yeah. So, <laughs> don't want to put any problem. Just kidding. No. I said, well, we'll get tickets, but we'll, not through we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I'm kidding. That's, but no, that's he big. was so yeah, I know, it's huge. It's huge. We were going to yeah. ask yeah. you about that yeah. as well. But yeah. uh, back to Torch. Sorry, uh, I had to, before I forgot. Um, but yeah, he's a great human. Yeah. 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 I will add, too, um, I think the biggest thing with guys like Torres is the players just want to know where they stand. They, they, want, it, they want it black and white, yep. you know, and it, it very clear because there's been coaches that we've all had that there's mind games going on. They don't talk to you. You know, there's a lot of this, like, psychological warfare. No one wants that. It's not right. good for nobody. Um, so at least you know where you stand with Torres, right? It's very clear. Um, and he's and he's open for dialogue, door open door policy and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. Not at not at your level or your involvement it, it but I, I i as i watch torts and i've gotten to know him i mean you, you got to study him you got to right. study him to really and i and we've we've developed i think a really good rapport and and uh, know when to stay away I, yeah. I, I, you know uh, but i listen and learn but the the one thing that 
how do I say this? If, if, if when I was playing basketball at a very amateur level, um, and a coach was that, if a coach were the, as direct as Torts is with his players, I would have gone into a shell for like, it would have taken me a week to recover. I, but what I really admire about these guys is that honesty, that honesty and directness, I believe, uh, builds a level of trust that when you get to the professional totally. level, that's all you want. All you, you, want. You, you want somebody that has your back, but, but tells you like totally. it is. You yeah. said that trust piece is hard to, is hard yeah. to earn. Yeah. yeah. And in crunch time, you need it. Yeah. And I think that's the guys will go to bat for guys like that for that exact reason. Cause no one wants to, to put their, you know, the bodies and everything on the line for a guy that you might question it has their back you know because they, they get the mind games and the stuff that yeah. they may have you know again yeah. that that directness that that honesty is so important you know what else is cool though with jonesy and danny like i i try to uh they i'm invited to the gm box because they're working right they're right, working right. i mean you you watch danny on the and the two of them are going back and forth discussing a play discussing whatever it might be uh the assistant coaches are popping in and out having conversations with them and i've enjoyed uh, sitting with them and uh, Jonesy sits in the middle Danny's over there because I don't want to bug him and he's you should see him just taking notes and commenting and um, Jones just say what'd you see on that play and it was cool for me during the year I'd say well I saw you know uh, it got checked in the board whatever whatever it might be good but you missed boom 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 so th that's the beauty of these guys they yeah. just they they love the game so much that they're willing to, to take someone like me, a fan, and a, a fan plus, but but, yeah. and teach me, yeah. and and for me that that speaks to the overall culture that we're trying to build. Yeah, yes. no doubt. And yeah, and how cool is that to, to get a pr different perspective too, right? That because I know like when I was coaching the, the Phantoms, it was it's always you're around different hockey minds, so they just see it differently. Yeah, you know, they see the exact same play, you can see it ten different ways, right? And then extracting what everyone sees and open, you know, kind of open discussion. And but it's uh, there's so much to learn when you have these these kind of conversations, especially yeah. from guys like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like how cool is that, especially as a you say a fan plus, right? Yeah. To get those insights scoops or there's inside perspectives that you might not get from well, your own well here's here's the other thing you talk about um and sometimes big time coaches or big time gms or presidents that, that their ego gets caught up right in right my way or the highway what, whatever you want to say so look uh, we all have to say our our power play struggle last year mm -hmm. is that it that's an understatement right? right right um so it wasn't like uh the coaches went in one room and just said, "Okay, we'll figure this out." They they all got together. The the some of the some of the the guys that are former players, you know, whether it's uh, uh, Patrick or uh, John Leclaire, or they got together with Danny and Keith and and just had a, a a sit down with the coaches where it was a group of former hockey players right. just sharing thoughts on how we could get better. How cool is that? It's yeah. awesome. How cool is that? I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there. I, I shouldn't be there. there. I didn't belong I, there. I would love to. Wouldn't you love to listen and, to yeah. that? And, yeah, it's a great point you make because uh, I, we had written down that um, another great job and, and things that you guys have done, and, and I love the point you made about former Flyers and people, you know, sometimes, you know, fans are going to say what they, you know, it's always 50-50, but, you know, get some new blood in here. Well, we did that kind of, and not to badmouth anyone, I'm not, oh, but we fell yeah. off a little bit and got away from the Flyers, and we're back on, obviously, on that path. But bringing in guys like John LeClaire, like you guys have, Wayne Simmons, yeah, uh, uh, you know, Patrick Sharp, that's huge because – I know Riley could probably speak on this too, but like these young kids coming in, they know who these guys are and they're very well respected it, it, as well as Danny yeah, and, and Jonesy. Jonesy. It's like that triumvirate you have there of, of, of torts, Danny, and then yeah. uh, obviously, uh, sorry, Keith Jones. Yeah, Keith Jones, Jonesy. I'm going to Dave, tell him. I'm going to tell him you hesitated. Yeah, yeah so, well, <laughs> tell, tell, tell him I did. I apologize. He had our sweatshirt on the other day, so I, I feel bad, but uh, I was I That's lost funny. my thought there for a second. But, um, like, Torts is Torts. We know Torts. He's going to demand everything out of you, but you saw the difference on the ice. Um, every You know, we probably exceed, like went above and beyond what we thought last year, uh, and it's still disappointing to fall short when you're right there, uh. but – but still, it's such an improvement. And Riley always says, uh, I, I love when you, when you talk about this, but we were losing games before, maybe a couple of years before, that 
they're bad ways to lose and 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 embarrassing ways. Embarrassing to lose. ways. And, when and we it, had a couple of those. We yeah, did. but not one, like yeah. oh, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, but the boys never quit, and that's they something towards. And then you've got Danny, who's one of the most competitive guys you know I've ever met. Uh, really good friends with him, and then Jonesy just knows the game. You know, yeah. like I don't. We used to joke about like some of the guys we've interviewed before, like that worked with Jonesy and, and broadcasters. Like he doesn't, he just knows. Like right. he doesn't yeah, even yeah. have to study uh, he, before he, the game. He he never writes anything. He down. just knows. He just, and he his just he'll, he'll remember a player, the year they came into the league, where they moved, and, yep. and it's it's amazing to watch. But you know, it, it it begs the question: What do we expect from this coming year? Mm-hmm. And I I look. Last year, I gave them. I wrote a number down of point total, um, and they kind of like laughed at me. So I gave them one this year. I'm not, I'm not divulging it. Okay. The only thing I'll tell you is I look at it as a fan who wants, right. who wants to see our team, of course, yeah. compete for a cup. Um, this is a pro. I'm not going to use that word. I get uh, this is this. It, we have a plan. And right. we're doing it the right way. And that plan doesn't necessarily mean that this year we'll see a marked improvement in point total. I mean, you, you look at the Devils. We're yeah. down last year. Yeah. Devils are going to be a heck of a team. Yeah. Uh, uh, according to Jonesy, Washington's improved. Uh, Carolina took a step back, but a step back from where? Yeah, right, I mean, we're right. going to have some real competition and we've got young guys who are getting better and better um we've got a rookie in mishkov that that we're all excited about but uh it's what i'm looking for where i sit as the i'll call myself the chief fan is competitive every single night Mm -hmm. trying to win every single night and playing flyer hockey every single night i'll be i'll be satisfied because i know that means we're building that foundation for 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 a great for a great future yeah no for sure and um and as we we're kind of nasty was talking about just like the way the team competes every single night and the, the, the no fight and uh, again the, the way to the way to lose right you're gonna lose games and there's just an attitude that you have to have when you're losing games and i think that was there and that's that, that kind of tells the tale in my opinion of the way the guys believe and the way the organization is trending is that it, it's not going to be an easy night when you're playing the no, flyers and that's you, you know there's you're gonna run into you know a b and c uh you know there's adversity you know throughout the game and to me that's the telling of the culture that you guys are have, yeah. have kind of recreated and restyled. the players are doing it yeah the player, and, and that's that summertime when the, yeah. you know they're all going out to golf together or yes what, going to the beach together whatever it might be um you know, it, it, it's 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 really interesting to watch it as uh, being inside to watch it, and there's it's it's a phenomenon that um, you can't make up. You right. can't. At, at some point, if something isn't authentic, it it, it falls apart. That's but right. the only thing I can say is, and I've, I've observed uh, teams, different varying teams over over decades. Uh, this is authentic. Yeah, this right. is authentic. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's that's is. pretty cool. Yeah, and you, you feel it, right? And energy don't lie. No, I think that's you're right. what you're seeing and feeling. That's why there's a buzz, and that's why maybe season ticket holders that may have maybe pumped the brakes on season tickets are coming back. And you know what I mean? There's a buzz. Yeah. Everyone I'm talking to, just like you know, even last year, and now obviously adding you know having Mitch Goff come in, there's an extra layer of buzz. But like they know that it's trending the right way, and that there's a feeling because the culture is back. So right? Riley, you, you, can I get into Mitch Goff for a second? Yes, yeah, so, please. Yeah. So obviously, um, we're so excited to have a player that, that uh, if circumstances were different, might have been the second pick a year ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he would say he should have been first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what fine. I love, that's what that's I love about him. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, the point that I want to make, so we, it, it became apparent that he was going to come. And, you know, when you, when you have something like that, like I wonder what, how Chicago advertised that Bedard was coming before last season. We didn't look into that, but as a group, we got together, and the feeling was, yeah, we needed to capitalize from a a marketing perspective, from a season ticket sales and other package sales uh, on this young, hopefully, phenom. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. But the way we did it was he was on a billboard, but he was standing behind Mm. our captain and our two alternate captains. And the whole thing is... We're all a team. Yeah. And what I loved about observing this young man here since he's been here, 
he likes it that way. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, he's like, I'm going to stay in the cup. But he's also, um, I'm part of a team. I'm paying my dues, and they're my leaders. Yes. That's what we wanted. That's amazing. And I, and I did notice that, and the psychology that went into that yeah. is, is powerful because, well, it's probably a, a few different reasons. Like, you don't want to put them, throw them out there to the wol wolves, right, either, and just, like, lean the whole organizational <laughs> success on this guy first year. But also, I think it, it just shows that, you know, obviously the, the – the city is excited for him. He's on a billboard right out of the gate without playing an NHL game, and but he's not the front guy, and he's part of the team. I think it's it screams much bigger than what you know. Exactly the way you just observe it on a billboard yeah. is powerful. Um, I think it helps and him he, out too. He folded, he's he folded. He's competitive as heck. He is. I, I hope you see it. You yeah. Oh yeah! Oh it. yeah! My gosh! And and this watching uh, Jet he, he skate up and down that he can fly. He can fly. So fly. anyway. Yeah, but Mitchkoff, uh, just what I've observed from the social media stuff that you guys do is how he's carrying himself in the city and obviously getting carted around all these different events, throwing pictures, this and that, but he seems to have an amazing attitude. Like, I'm a mature. Yeah, yeah, I did you see that. Yeah. It was like a shot. But, <laughs> yeah. but he but put it right over the plate. Yeah, he did. It was yeah, a he did. No matter what. <laughs> <laughs> That's an athlete <laughs> right there. Right? Sorry to interrupt, Rob. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I just, I just love the way he's carrying himself, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I know the season hasn't officially started, but uh, he seems to have a good sense of humor with like limited language and just. Uh, have some fun. Seems like, yeah, just uh, having fun with it, which I think is important versus maybe being a little too rigid with the pressure and, you know, working against you. So I'm, I'm excited. I mean, yeah. I know everyone else is too. So, so can I say like one, uh, one plug for, for the, the hockey side and the business side? Sure. Um, and it's a thank you to all the, the tens of thousands should I say millions of fans? That oh. watch you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the, the millions. <laughs> yeah. The millions. Uh, the, the, thank you. The, 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 the response and people, like you said, who are coming back, who are buying a single ticket to a game or buying a package or interested in sponsoring. Um, thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for giving us time to rebuild or build, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's not going to be perfect, uh, but... Uh, the reaction that the fans in general have given to uh, what Jonesy, Danny, Torts, and their colleagues are doing um, is, is really heartwarming and, and makes me even more excited about the future. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. And that, that has a lot to do with you, too. I know you probably won't say that, but it, it really does. You have, a, you have, like you say, you're a fan. You understand what it's like to be a fan, and, and that part of it to me is huge. And it, it shows with, like, the interaction you have yeah. and getting stopped. You know, yeah. people are excited again. Yeah. Um, one of the things you said a few minutes ago uh, was, like, you didn't, you didn't want to say it was a process. I think that's where you were going. I know. I know I get, why. I get, I get, I get called yeah, out yeah, all yeah, the time. No, 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 I hear you. But, but uh, unfortunately, it basically is. It is. It's yeah. a re but when you get a guy like Mitch Cobb, like, we kind of were joking around about it, or if you didn't get him this year, it's still the patient part of it is – is probably hard or yeah. you you know you're a businessman so you, but for fans it's like oh we got yeah. this guy like, but you got to be patient well even bedard last year i mean right he, he watches the season went on he got mm -hmm. comfortable still he's growing into his body this kid is he's, he's a tank built. he's a, he tank. a tank so riley let me let me ask you from your perspective what are you looking for what are you, are you, you how many hockey games have you watched in your life what Almost, are you looking for yeah, from any rookie but a rookie that comes in at, with such high expectations what what does your professional eye i would say uh some level of consistency right uh f fearlessness right i mean you got a creative player like mitrov coming in like you want him to make plays and yeah. not be f scared to make plays but within the boundaries of like the situation itself um competing on he's going to make mistakes he's going to turn pucks over he's going to try and make a play i think it's just this the, the second effort how, how quickly do you respond and, and get back into defensive position and try and make up for your mistake right um and defend i think if, if the effort's there on both sides of the puck you know torts and the team can live with the right. mistakes because yeah. they're going to happen right he's a high level executor with you know and high level skills so he's going to try and make plays that might some guys might not ever think of playing are making um, I think as long as his attitude is about just like getting back to the middle of the ice and recovering and hustling back you know everyone sees that and you can live with the mistakes but the consistency as long as the efforts there um, you know the, re the rest of it's going to fall and I expect obviously his, his efforts going to be there but and, and there's so many other great 
young players, or I should say really good young players with mm-hmm. great potential. Right, right. I mean, I, we could rattle them off. Uh, the year Forrester had yes. last year. Uh, um, I'm so excited to see a healthy Jamie Drysdale and, yeah. and, That's true. and Yorkie. Yeah. And um, I could go on and on. I don't want to leave anybody out. But, right. I, but, but my point is there's a group of them tip it. I mean, yeah. that, that are on the verge. And uh, as long as they continue to uh, uh, work on their craft in a team concept, I think exciting days are coming. It, it's really exciting, and, and I'll just throw in with, with uh, Matt Fay. It's funny how he, he, we talked about the the, the board with, with him on it behind those guys. When you have guys like TK, Coots, Lots, you're going to work because they're working so hard, mm-hmm. and you're following them, right? Like, uh, I think as long as he's competing, which how are you not? Well, for one, the coach is going to like We joked with Danny. Matt Faye's going to act like he doesn't understand too much English maybe when Torch gets mad, <laughs> yeah. but he goes, I think he'll understand what he's I trying know, to yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? By the way, in the, what, what's four weeks? I don't know how long total yeah. he's been here. I can't believe how he studies and he's, stu- he's trying to say more and more oh, every cool. day. It cracks me up. Yeah. yeah. No, cracks me up. It's important. And uh, just, just building off kind of what we're talking about just sounds like we're in the, in the world of perform or uh, performance and leadership leadership from the top down in the organization coots tk lots but like obviously you being a ceo with the independence blue cross ceo of comcast spectacore and then beyond just the corporations like leadership in philadelphia i mean you talked about the fifa bringing the fifa soccer here like the importance of proper leadership and then how can someone maybe refine that skill of leadership and maybe a couple of things that you might notice throughout your years. Yeah, so I'm, it's, I'm so happy you used the FIFA bringing the World Cup here as an example. So um, what, what, what I believe um, is a true indication or an indication of a true leader, if there is such a thing as a true leader, is the ability to understand that regardless of what your position is, you're still a cog in the wheel. Mm. Meaning um, at the end of the day, there was uh, the ambassador of, of Canada, David Cohen, who used to be a Comcast. He's the one that raised the bulk of the money. He's the one that put us on the map. And then he happened to be named ambassador to Canada. I was asked to take over. I filled that role uh, respectfully. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to point to FIFA came to meet with us, with the host committee. We're making our presentation right over at the link. I'm looking there. The, the Eagles were phenomenal. Just even from the way they they uh, they manage the pitch or the field, whatever you like to call it, to Jeffrey Laurie, just impromptu coming in and speaking to FIFA about Philadelphia, mm. Brian Roberts. Now these are, you know, yeah. mega mega uh, uh, biggies, so right. to yeah, speak, yeah. and and coming with passion and talking about why Philadelphia. That that what, what I'm saying is. They realize with all their experience, sure, I've accomplished stuff, with all the things they've accomplished, that us all working together, you can accomplish things big, bigger than one or two of us can do. And that has always been uh, my, my philosophy around leadership and business. And the other thing is, like, I am, we're who we are, right? You know, I mean, like, I got nothing to hide. I, I, it's just... Here it is. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. I think that's disarming for people. And if they see that you're really authentic, authentic is the term you use, yeah. authentic about wanting to accomplish a goal as a group, they buy in. They buy yeah. in. Yeah. It's never failed me. Yeah. Yeah. That authenticity, uh, authenticity piece is, in my opinion, for what I've observed in leadership roles, is, is the most important piece. Because yeah. you're only going to trust someone that as close to authentic as they possibly can. If, if, there's, if you've seen holes in their character, there's a lack of trust, and it's how, how can there be solid leadership, right? Want to hear an odd thing yeah, that, that I, I kind of picked up early on? And um, it, I, when I go in an office to meet with somebody, I've done it, I've done it for years, I look at, and, and like, what do you call the exact, you call this the penthouse, we gotta change that. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 but the exact, I look at, I walk in for the first time, I look at how many doors are closed. Mm. And when I see a lot of doors closed, uh, for whatever reason, I'm suspect of how cohesive that team is. If I see the CEO's door closed, now, 
we all have meetings. Right. There's all confidentiality. Right. But I'm talking about you get a vibe that that door's closed more than it's open. It tells me a lot. Mm-hmm. You go you go over uh, again if they're in meetings, their doors are closed. But other than that, people walking in and out of each other's offices. Uh, I poke in just to say hi to the coaches. They're all huddled together, having conversations, laughing, talking, trying to figure this out. That's what good teams are. Yeah, that's where the trust is built, and, yeah. and I think that goes. Uh, to the very top of any organization. You can learn a lot by what you see in the environment where people work. Totally. What, what have you noticed over the years? Like, is a lot of the same pillars of leadership still the same? I mean, communication's obviously always been important, but the amount of communication, the means of communication, like what is... Well, what I've seen is, other than the, the, the people that are comfortable in their own skin, I think that's, that's important. I think it's, uh, for me... A, a leader who would engage and and be open to teaching me. Mm. Um, I had uh, several really strong men mentors and really strong women mentors. Frankly, I'm not embarrassed. At starting with my mother, of uh, all five foot two of her, who who would put me up in the corner and tell me what the facts were. Yeah. My, my point is that an, a willingness to share, a willingness to um, uh, to, to ha- let you in so that you could help figure out what was best strategically, business-wise, whatever, for, for an organization. So it's that, it is that openness. It's that um, willingness to say, here I am. Right. The good, bad, sometimes ugly, but this is who I am. And if you accept me and I accept you and we allow each other's gifts to rise, unstoppable. Right, yeah, I agree. Has it always been that way? Because I feel like the old school way has been more traditionally more, I don't want to say dictatorship, but it's more been like, you know, the forceful, you know, energy down, um, push versus toe. Is that, is that, is that? I think sometimes there's a need for that. And I would say, yes, I, I just think the, 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 the what are what young people are exposed to today that it, that you guys were exposed a little more than I was, but it 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 it, co- it it forces us all to be more open. It forces us all to engage because you can't hide from social media. You can't hide from chat rooms. You can't hide from. I don't want to. I don't want to participate in them. But it makes me understand that hey, I'm okay if wh- whatever they're saying, because it's okay. There's nothing to hide. Right. And I think in the past to protect turf or to protect a secret important to the business leaders would tend to be a little more insular a little more just trust a couple of people and right. hey different styles work i, I just uh, uh I'm, um, I'm neither smart enough or or um uh how do i say this cagey enough to yeah. to, to think that i can do it on my own right well i'll tell you what i i just learned something there too by the way yeah. that, that's a great <laughs> point i just want to say quickly about Walking into an office and seeing door like that's an unbelievable. Yeah, I never thought about that. I know it's important. um, We know you got to go. The boss is uh, flagging us here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, she's flagging me, Roger, with about four (laughs) more questions. I'm sorry, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) (laughs) give me the hairy eyeball here. Like, sorry, no, 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 no. no, uh, But we thank you so much for your time. I really, I really enjoyed it. Yes, great. So we thank you so much. I want to talk to you about hoops one day. I played basketball as well. College, believe it or not, we're Division Two, Coker University. Yeah. So I was a good high school player in South Jersey, but um. I always wanted to play at my my father's alma mater, St. Joe's, and I did at Division One. Yes, of course. I was all I was a very good sub varsity player. Uh, that's why I really respect guys that in in the the minor leagues of hockey that stick to it because they love it. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, and by yeah. any other standard, they're great hockey players. But right, not, of course, they're not doing what you accomplished. And, right, and so. Um, I, I hit my let's say I well, hit my ceiling. Yeah. I got the. Yeah, uh, did you too. get better in your late twenties and thirties? I got. I, I did. I was, I was good. Well, my, no, I was good. I, I, I my just, body got better. I think. Well, yeah, I I was tiny when I got to college. I was afraid to be honest with you. I was yeah. playing with look like men, you know. Me like, too. That's, yeah, it was. They were big, big guys, but uh, I I love I jumper. Loved, I was a point guard, but yeah I, yeah, I scored in high school. But like you said, you get to college; it's a, yeah, no. you know you're facilitating more. But high school, I could get by anybody. Uh, college guys were two and three inches taller right. and and as fast. Yeah, for Just sure. A whole different. So, all right, you guys, we thank awesome. you so Appreciate much. It. All right, huge thank you to Dan Hill for hopping on. Awesome guy, man. We're an awesome guy. So, so good to have someone like him, you know, overseeing the ship and and the decisions him and his team make and man it's 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 awesome yeah if you're a flyers fan 
you got to be happy with with what's going on with yeah. this guy. He, Agreed. He's a good man. Yeah, and the conversation was refreshing. Just sure we, was. you know, we, we've we've known him for a little bit here now. Had some conversations, but to to kind of hear him dig into it and and, and speak openly about all of it um, is exciting. It, it just, is. just adds another level of excitement for me. I can yeah, for sure. Myself. We and you know he's he's so busy. Well, I could have I had a lot more to, to talk too, about, but we, yeah. we know uh, how busy he is. Two point so. oh, yeah, two point oh. We'll get him at some point, but he he was awesome, and and a lot like you said, a lot of things that he said were, man, it's exciting. It's exciting for for the Flyers and for the fans and everybody really in is. Philadelphia. It's Ball, about time, is it? No, for the Flyers oh. to be, <laughs> for the flyers to be back on else. track. But yeah, yes, you're but right. It, it is it is time for that as well. But, but it is also, that time, Nast. For what? You know what time it is. It's time for Clear Questions. Brought to you by Clear Rum. Go to clearrum.com slash shop. Type in Nasty2023 and get 35% off of your order. PA residents only. Baller, let's go. Leading us off today would be our friends from Jersey Cherco. All right. All right. Our boys. What is one moment in your hockey career that you would go back and change? One moment. Well, I didn't play, so, Briley, this is going to be for you, and I would imagine to be changing those blades you had. You <laughs> mean from righty to lefty? From righty to lefty, straight yeah. To lefty? Uh, yeah, probably my paddle. Terrible sticks. <laughs> Terry Nasty's Chris. told those stories a few times. Um, Sorry. You know, honestly, I don't think it's a moment, but as we talked about with uh, Sawyer Bolton in our pre, yeah. if I was to go back in time and change a thing or two, I think I would probably have spent a little more time working on the craft of skills, just working on basic, you know, puck protection, um, just carrying the puck in certain stressful situations, just whatever, just doing more skill stuff. I think yeah. I was so ingrained, the, whole, the fighting piece consumed me where I was so focused on that and I couldn't get, couldn't wait to get up in the weight room and just left because I thought it was going right. to be a better hockey player, better fighter and, you know, it was just a different way of thinking but that would be the one thing and just like, I was a hockey player at the end of the day, I still needed to play and, ha right. and handle the puck and all that good stuff but, but it was probably, you know, um, one of those things where it consumed me to a to a fault but also it was also the reason why i probably ever played too is yeah. that i was just so fo so focused on that and i knew my role and i knew exactly you know what i needed to do but i didn't give myself enough bandwidth to grow you know right and staying in that four or five minutes a night uh you know i was i was almost i don't want to say happy with that but i i almost accepted that that was my ceiling ceiling versus maybe I poured a little more into it uh maybe maybe could have played a little bit more who knows yeah maybe well I, I think i think you're being a little hard on yourself because and here's why uh i know you say that a lot but you also got to look at the time when you were playing right and a lot of guys a little different era. focus more on that side of it and that's why you were pretty damn successful uh being in that role um the game's changed over the years yeah, now. Right. I feel like if you were playing now and you still had that role, which we've seen teams need this role, mm -hmm. you got it. You still have to have some heaviness to your game and you got You have to have a guy that's going to be there to protect, but they also have to play more yeah. minutes most in most cases. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think if For you sure. were playing now and you were in that role, you probably would do more of that. Yeah. Uh, but at that time, yeah. you know, you knew, you know, you were great at your role. You knew your role, and that's probably why you didn't. Yeah, yeah, do that, it as much exactly. And yeah. I would agree with that. You know, there's obviously way less heavy weights around, right? Like the, yeah. the fact that I was fighting a heavy weight every <laughs> night, I, I need to thicken up and, and beef up a little bit. There was obviously a little bit of uh, of strategy there, right? Uh, so I would definitely have leaned up and you know been more of a middleweight type of guy now because to your, to your point, you have to play. You can't yes. you can't have a guy on your team on your fourth line playing four minutes, five no. minutes a night. It no. don't exist anymore. So appreciate the, the pumping of the tires. Yep, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I just thought of something when you were making fun of your blades. So you used that green goblin to stick with the holes in it? <laughs> yeah. Why? Gobsy. He's now asking me to deal with RBK. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and it was like their new thing, and uh -huh. and he why? Did not why is it? That's a good question. Why? <laughs> hey, why is a great twenty five hundred dollars merch? The, the, better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the mission helmet was more than that. Yeah, yeah it was five k. It was three games. Yeah. You got five or whatever it was. It was all was it? Oh, eight games. Eight, eight games. games oh, my yeah. bad. My right. bad. Uh, but Baller, uh, <laughs> the worst part of the green gobsy is he wouldn't retape the damn thing. It drove me nuts. 
Didn't need to. Yeah, you did. It's fresh tape job. There was game. no fresh tape job. <laughs> I hardly even touched yeah. the ice, let alone a puck hit. Well, the, the stick was on the ice oh, the stick a lot. was on the shaft. The shaft, <laughs> the shaft is cool. Was on the ice. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question, Baller. Yeah. This one is from Rich, not in Canada. He says, boys, you keep crushing it. How early is too early to lock up your young stars? Well, appreciate the... Yep, thank you for saying that. Um, well, we kind of talked about this a little bit uh, earlier, but... I think one, it depends on the player, of course. Obvi- obviously. But I think he said young, your young players. Uh, I think in that management position there, that's that's a thing you have to do, which people probably don't realize how tough that is because you have to think where's this guy's ceiling. Well, so a- Baller made a great point. We were talking about it earlier. Uh, you bridge a guy, or do you see the ceiling way up here? And like we let's lock, lock him, him in down. for seven, eight years. Yeah. I mean, there's a few variables there, obviously, as you mentioned, right? The the level of talent, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the, the amount of progress, the development they've made in a certain amount of time. And then, again, there's a level of projection. You have to you yeah. almost, like, you look into the future and see where is this guy's ceiling. Um, and then that has to be based on what he's already kind of done. And, and, you know, like Owen Tippett's probably a great example. You've seen the guy over a year to kind of, come into his own and, and, and show that he can be a high-level player and high-level scorer. Right. So you, you kind of you expect that he's going to keep getting better. And, you know, so not eight years would be, you know, make a ton of sense. Right. Um, so I think I think it really all depends on the player, how much success he's had at the NHL level the last couple of years. And then that would determine, you know, do you, do you, do you bridge or do you – Right. Lock him down long term, and he's going to be a essentially part of the core group here moving forward. Those are the tough questions you have to to ask the you know the the brass when you're right build, building for the future, right? Not just building one year at a time. Like, right. Yes, you are temp- technically, but you're really kind of looking way beyond that. So yeah. Anything else to add? No, I, I think you're right. That's exactly it. It's it's a I don't want to say a gamble, but I mean, there's some players like wish we had that. You know, kill McCarr. Right. Like, you, you watch him his first playoff round yeah. coming right out of college. Lock him like, down for ten. Lock him down. Yeah, right. But no, it's it's a you know it's a gamble. And again, I, th- I just think it's like what they think the ceiling is for for certain players. Right. It's a great question. Yeah. Jack B over on Twitter wants to know when is the show going live at a local bar? Man, we've talked about this a lot. We've had a couple things come up. Close, We're hoping soon. Close encounters. Yeah. Who knows where it's going to be? We've talked a couple different. Uh, potential partners on that but um just gonna keep doing the stew for now until the right partner falls in our lap so anybody out there that's interested yeah please feel free to hit us up we've had a few things come our way but uh hasn't made it it'd be a lot of fun that's for sure definitely a lot of fun We, we hope to do it we got one more this one is from jared watson over on facebook if you could bring back any old arena which one would you bring back and why Winnipeg Arena, the old one. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking. Oh, um, I was there. Yeah, well, yeah, I grew up watching Jets yeah, there. I mean, you, you went there a million. But times, I mean, yeah. there, outside of just watching the Jets there, there really doesn't have a, any rather reason for me to right. want to go back in that building. Um, hmm, it's a good question. Spectrum. Wait. Yeah, well. man, what a building! God, if you, we'd be looking right we'd at looking it at right the spectrum now. right now. Yeah, we'd now. be looking right at it. Um, for me. Uh, I was fortunate enough my very first year with the Florida Panthers to get to go to the Boston Garden, uh, and yeah. that was just super cool. Like mm-hmm. uh, I grew up obviously watching hockey, but a lot of basketball, Celtics, and we played at 1 o'clock that afternoon. It was a Sunday game, I believe, and uh, the Celtics played after at 7, so I got it was double whammy for me because i got to see obviously we played there the panthers played the bruins and then i was able to see all the players coming in for the game uh so it was really cool yeah i i thought it was i know i it it was it felt like it was a lot like the spectrum where the the, the fans were like right, right on, you, on you but it seemed more than even the spectrum they seemed a little closer and on top of you but it was it was a really cool building and toronto too yeah. toronto's i mean the, where there are now is beautiful but right. that was a really cool building yeah. The other one I would mention I never played in, uh, just growing up watching hockey in Canada, hockey in Canada is the old Montreal Forum. Yeah. Uh, it's where the brawl was. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. exactly. And um, so I, I just, I think it's just because of the 
the aesthetics of that old school kind of feel, right? Yeah. It just kind of just kind of represents old school, old time hockey. So right. for that reason, I would say that. But um, yeah, great question. Never yeah, really gave that is much, a good question. Gave, gave it much thought. So yeah, I think that's a wrap. It's a wrap. Good we got to leave the penthouse. Books. We didn't last long. We were only here a few hours. Have to set up a bed here. And he said we could. He said don't call it the penthouse. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're going to change it. You better believe they're going to change the name yeah, after this. Change it. That's great. But uh, that's 172 in the books now. Yes, it is. From the penthouse, the Wells Fargo Center. Yeah. Until next week for 173. Be sure to stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.